Welcome to the Kent Survival Halloween Special. On our journey into Pluckley, we visited the ruins of St Mary's Church on the outskirts of the village. Built in the 13th century, the church was eventually destroyed by a German V1 flying bomb in the Second World War. Although the church has no official ghosts, locals speak of a mist that gathers in the consecrated grounds of the church even causing concerned passers-by to search for non-existent fires. Perhaps from the spirits of those buried in the cemetery, unhappy with their derelict place of rest. Hello guys, welcome to the Kent Survival Halloween Special. We're in the most haunted place in the UK today, Pluckley, has a village and the screaming woods. I'm joined by Tom, by Tom Outdoors. We're gonna have an explore and see what we can find. Well, I'm here in Pluckley now, St Leonard's Church behind me. I'm sat in the cemetery with my ghost stories book. For decades, Pluckley rejoiced under the title of the most haunted village in England. I say rejoiced, but over the years, Pluckley's spooky status attracted not just lovers of ghost stories, but also a rowdy element which would descend on the village at Halloween, making a nuisance of themselves. So much annoyance was caused that the police took to cordoning off the village on the night of the 31st October and sending visitors elsewhere. Pluckley's most haunted title was awarded because at least a dozen ghosts are claimed to haunt its houses, streets and immediate surroundings. Apparently the Red Lady haunts St Nicholas Church, usually inside but she occasionally wanders around the graveyard too. The church is also haunted by a woman in white, believed to be a former Lady Daring and in addition her little white dog. The woods we're staying in tonight, Daring Woods, are named after the family that the ghost that resides here comes from. But they are locally called the Screaming Woods, so we'll find out if that's true. Phantom coach and horses trundles down Pluckley Village's high street in the early hours of the morning. It is occasionally seen the coachman is said to be headless, but more often heard as the thump of hooves and the jingling of harnesses move their way down the street. Pluckley's Black Horse Pub is also well known for its many ghosts, one of which being an invisible phantom who makes himself known by moving both glasses and possessions around the pub which can go missing for days on end, 
many customers have felt or seen the presence of a small child. This long history of happenings has been experienced by both landlady and landlord and customers throughout the pub's rich history. At the Daring Arms, a former family hunting lodge which retains its ostler's bell, the resident ghost is an old lady who sits at a table in the bar, dressed in the clothes of a century ago. The apparition has been seen by several regulars, and usually before they had a drink. Elvie Farm is a medieval farmstead turned boutique hotel. It has a number of ghosts, including that of farmer Edward Brett, who shot himself in the dairy. The ghost is said to move objects around, slam doors shut, and make various crashes and bangs around the house. The unpleasant smell of burning wool has also been detected here for reasons unknown. I'm here at Pinnock Bridge, just on the outskirts of Pluckley. It's quite a busy road there. And um, it's on this bridge that a uh, watercress seller, old lady, perished when uh, her tobacco pipe fell on her clothing, is what I read. And uh, this is the location. Right, we've just uh, driven from Pluckley Village down to the Screaming Woods. Uh, we're in the car park here now, and um, yeah, just going to pack up and uh, get into the woods and find a, a good spot to uh, pitch up in. Well, as you can probably see, it's pretty dark. I've just got the torch out to try and find a spot. There is still some light in the sky, but. Uh, not in these woods. We've come far enough to hunt near the road or anything now. Just got to find a, a nice flat opening somewhere. Right, so we're just walking into the woods. We've got quite far in and uh, you might just be able to make out over there. Hang on. Dun, dun. There's a car in here. No, we can't get over to it because there's a stream there to check it out, but yeah, I think we're going to make our way away from this. Fifty bodies in it. Right, that's uh, my hex peak set up here in the woods. Got a couple of chairs set up. Tom's putting up his Jack Wolf skin over here. All right. And uh, we'll have a fire in between somewhere. Do you know, I was just thinking. Yep. I think this is the first time we've ever camped in the woods together. <laughs> oh. It's all been coastal and history yeah. ones. That is true. I expect to see some bushcraft. <laughs> Come <Yeah>. on, Kent. <laughs> Tom's put up his OEX uh, tarp as well. Badly. We're not expecting rain, but this is around head height, so yeah. something to sit under. Yeah, so we've just done the walk in, saw a few weird things, and when we got to camp here, we uh, heard screaming. So that's our first scream of the screaming woods. I think it was a fox. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> but um, yeah, walking through these woods kind of reminded me a bit of the uh, the Blair Witch Woods. Kind of very close, claustrophobic, unkept, and uh, quite hard to, to manoeuvre around. But it's been five, six, seven years since I was last here, quite a while ago now, and that was on a Halloween as well, but um, didn't spend the night. This will be my first full night in the woods at uh, the Screaming Woods. Got a Diddy pumpkin, it's my pumpkin. Tom's got two massive ones. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> she didn't. 
<laughs> but um, I'm not going to waste the innards here, I'm going to cook a uh, pumpkin soup on the stove. Although, we're going to have a fire, could do it on that. Ah, we'll save the fire for in a bit. So we can sit around and enjoy it. Here Andy, do you want a hand with that? Yeah! <laughs> Cut. Right, I've got a spoon to scoop this. But I've actually got something else to remove the flesh. I'm going to use... Oh, I did throw it in here. It's gone missing. That's weird. I'll look for that in a minute, but I've... Oh, there it is. I've got my crook knife, my spoon carving knife to take the flesh out the inside. So seeing as we're in the woods, I'm just going to dump out the seeds and that. Maybe we'll come back to the same spot another year and uh, <laughs> there'll be a pumpkin patch. Alright, so that's most of that empty now. I can just go in. It's a last minute fault this, just to use this, and it really cuts through nice. As you'd expect, being for wood. Not a huge amount of flesh in here, being such a small one, but uh, just making a cup of soup, basically. Bit of a variation of something I'd do at home, really, like a squash, usually a butternut squash soup. Some onion and garlic. Garlic, you'd like it, Tom. People all hate garlic. <laughs> I don't need all this flesh, so I'm just going to chop up some of it and add it to the cup. Got some onion to go in here as well. And some sweet potato. I only brought a small bit out because it's all I need. Finally here, just got a clove of garlic. Don't I'll use the whole thing, it's only a, a cup of soup. That should do. I'm going to put in about a half of a vegetable stock cube. And I've got some Smokey Davidson's General Spice Rub. That's my old <laughs> barbecue company from back in the day. And uh, put in a bit of that. Bit of chili, paprika, salt, pepper rest of it's a secret recipe. Add some water to that. Not too much. Quite a nice thick soup. Just get the uh, burner on the go there. Get a cup on and uh, should be ready in about 15 minutes or so.
Right, so let's get this party started. We're going easy with the fire. Just a zip fire brick. Here, Andy, do you want to hand with that fire? Waft some air into it. Right, so that's been simming our way probably for 20 minutes now, to be honest. It's good this bush box because you can still fit the simmering on a Tranger and Esbit. So you can see there, everything's gone quite gooey. And just with my fork, seeing as you don't have a blender in the woods, I can just squidge everything and get a nice chunky soup. And I am starving. We've got our fire going quite well now, and uh, Tom's on his second pumpkin. <laughs> and we've just been hearing some voices around the woods. Being the screaming woods, they're quite popular for people to come to at night, and as we're approaching Halloween, they, uh, they'd busy up with people. <laughs> so uh, they sounded quite off in the distance. We just turned off our headlamps and waited a minute, but I don't think they are anywhere near here. But I'm just gonna sit and enjoy my nice chunky soup's really thickened up now. <laughs> oh, that's hot. <laughs> oh, that is nice though. There's a perfect amount of spice in there. I've actually got some hot sauce that Tom gave me before, but I think it's got enough in there, to be honest. I've got another French uh, main meal, ration pack meal with me as well. This could be my starter. I'm going to wait a minute. So it's around midnight now. We've um, been hanging around camp, chatting away over the campfire. Earlier in the evening we did hear voices in the woods. As I said before, these woods are pretty popular for people to come and, you know, mess around because they are the screaming woods. But um, I thought I'd just take a little walk, have a look around, get a feel for the, for the, for the forest. But uh, nothing as yet. So, um, as you've seen earlier in the video, the uh, village of Pluckley is pretty haunted, but the woods have their own stories as well. You've got the first one, which is an 18th century colonel that hung himself in the woods, and uh, apparently he can be heard. And you've also got uh, a highwayman that uh, I believe was uh, beheaded in these woods as well. Um, there's also some other kind of folklore stories as well. Apparently in the 40s there was um, a pile of bodies found in these woods. Around 20 or so men, women and children found just piled up and they couldn't determine the cause of death. I think they concluded that it was carbon monoxide poisoning somehow. And the theory goes that um, the police were involved in the murders of these people. You've also had uh, students go missing in these woods as well, never to be seen again. But um, I don't know how it'd be alone here, but the two of us have had quite a chilled evening, really. The only screaming we've heard so far is uh, earlier in the evening when people were walking around and a couple of foxes 
had some owls as well, but uh, nothing else as yet. So I'm going to have a little walk around. I can still see the fire from camp, so I know where I'm heading, so I won't get lost. But uh, we shall see. <laughs> Got with me this beef tortellini from uh, an old French ration pack. So that's going to be my main meal for this evening. I say this evening, it's pretty early hours of the morning by now, isn't it? So I'm just going to rip the lid off of that and stick it on the uh, burner here. There we go. Right, that's us for the night. We've had our hot drinks and dinners and uh, turning in now. We've not had any more incidents in camp. Not really heard any screaming since the fox or the crazy people. So we'll uh, see what happens overnight. If there is anything, I'll uh, turn the camera on. Um, one thing I was going to show actually is they use one of these in the tent now. It's like one of these fold out dog bowls that pack down. It's very good for keeping your keys, your wallet, your phone in, stuff like that that you want at hand at night in a tent. I know some of them have pockets, but I really like having this. You can just reach out and grab what you need. Um, but anyway, yeah, so uh, good night for now, and uh, I'll see you in the morning. Well, it was a pretty uneventful night really. I'd actually say these woods are really peaceful. They're really nice. They're a little bit claustrophobic to move through once you're off the uh, tracks, but um, yeah, really peaceful night. I think um, about 5 a.m. we both got woke up by a fox screaming. Um, went back to sleep, yeah, really good night's sleep. Um, you can hear the uh, ch village church bells ringing in the background, just faintly coming in on the wind. But it's a still night as well, actually, saying that. Very still. Yeah, really peaceful. Um, so, yeah, I'm afraid we saw no ghosts in the screaming woods or in the village. So uh, maybe we'll have to try something else next year. I hope you've enjoyed um, visiting the most haunted place in England with us. And um, I'll stick some other videos up on the screen for you to check out if you've enjoyed this one. So I'm just going to get back to camp with Tom there. We're just going to scrape back the leaves and everything. I've already dealt with the fire. It was only small. And um, do the usual leave no trace. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much. Goodbye.